Hello students and welcome to another lecture here in the Programming Fundamentals with C Sharp course. Welcome and I hope you have watched the previous video as this is part of a larger lecture series that I do at the HTL Leonding, a vocational college for computer science. I will add a notification somewhere I think here and also in the comment um, below this video so if you haven't watched the previous videos please do so because these videos build on each other. Last time um, we did a larger exercise. We did the going for gold exercise and uh, to close the chapter about variables, constants and literals I have a few professional tips for you. These professional tips are things that go a little bit farther than just the basics so if you want to become a good C-sharp programmer you should definitely remember them. The first thing is just a theory thing. You have seen me typing in these lectures multiple times such things where I calculate something, let me show you that here, where I calculate something or where I compare something or where I compare something with a greater or greater equal. Sometimes we concatenate strings and the important thing that you should remember as a kind of semi-pro developer is that these things are called expressions. Note that these expressions do not end with a semicolon. So when I say we need an expression here, what I mean with that is that we need some calculation or some variable names or some string concatenation. This is meant with expressions. Please keep this uh, important term in mind. I'm going to use this term from now on pretty often. Expressions. Second thing, which I want to tell you as a kind of pro tip, are so-called advanced integer literals. What you can do is you can use the so-called hexadecimal format if you specify a number. If you have no idea what the hexadecimal format is, ask your math teacher. They can tell you that. If you are in the HTL, you will definitely learn hexadecimal in, um, in, in mathematics and maybe we will also cover it a little bit later in this course when we do some exercises about different numbering versions. For now, just remember that if I tell you that you need a hexadecimal number, add the 0x prefix here. If you need something in a binary format, if you have a number in the binary number format, then you need to add the 0b prefix. If you again have no idea what binary format is, have patience. It will be covered in mathematics or later on in this course. Just remember for now there is a way to express binary integer literals and that's 0b at the beginning. The next thing is clearer, even for those of you who don't know what hexadecimal or binary is. The underscore for digital grouping. Sometimes you have pretty large values in your code. For instance, 80 million as you see here. It is way easier to read the code if you add underscores as decimals, uh, sorry, as digit grouping separators so you can easily spot the thousand elements. So in this case, my, uh, my eye takes a look at this number and I immediately see that this is 80 million. If I wouldn't have the underscores here, I would have to start counting the zeros and that is more difficult. So use the underscore for digit grouping if you want to have that. If you want to know more, you can always find the links in my slides, but be careful. These links bring you to the documentation and especially if you are a beginner, the documentation might be a little bit overwhelming in the moment. So keep these links for your personal record for later on when you have more experience and when you can really read all and understand all the details in the documentation. The last thing is a kind of difficult thing. It's easy to understand, but I was not sure if I should tell you this secret already and I decided, oh yes, I will tell it to you and I hope it will not make you write bad code. We will see how everything turns out. We, the, the concept is called type inference. 
the to make a long story short the compiler can figure out the data type in many cases for you take a look at these examples i think if you take a look at the examples it becomes immediately clear on the left hand side you see the traditional way of how we declared variables so far we always mentioned the data type at the very beginning of in this case the assignment statements integer x string s integer number now one could argue that this is not really necessary because if the compiler would be smart the compiler could take a look at the right hand side of the equal sign and see that this is an integer literal so why do I have to tell the compiler that this is integer it could figure it out on its own same is true for strings I use a string here so why do I have to explicitly say that it is a string same is true here I integer parse something so it must be an integer why say uh, why do I have to say integer twice and the answer is you really don't because what you can do you can let the compiler be smart and simply always use the word var see var 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 now this var is the same as on the left hand side so the type of the variable does not change you just tell the compiler hey compiler please be smart figure out the variable uh, the type of the variable yourself by looking on the right hand side of the equal sign so if you want you can experiment with var if that confuses you more than it helps stick to the old version of writing it there's nothing wrong with that it's perfectly fine if you write it like that even professional programmers many professional programmers they prefer the syntax on the left hand side but still if you like a smart compiler and if you would like to give it a try it's perfectly fine from now on to use var it's your choice choose whatever seems right to you good and with that, we have closed the chapters of literal, variables, data types, and constants. So sit up, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Next chapter. The next chapter is code blocks. And I used a character here from a computer game. Maybe you have seen this computer game before. It's called Cave Story. Uh, the computer game Cave Story is a, 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 a widely popular independent game. It's pretty old, but if you're looking for a new computer game that you would like to try, you can try that one. And I use this figure because she is called Curly Brace. And guess what? We are talking about code blocks. And code blocks use curly braces a lot. So let's take a look. Curly braces can be used to group statements into code blocks let me show that example here this is one program and what you have what you see here is that somewhere inside the program here and here I'm opening a code block and here and here I'm closing the code block so what we get is we get two different code blocks on the one hand side we have that one and on the other hand side we have that down here and we call them code blocks because of the curly braces the code will still be executed from top to bottom this is the program flow one statement after the other we can simply group some statements into a common block you might ask yourself why why could I do that I will answer that in a second but first let me tell you some additional things we can also group blocks of code inside other blocks of code. Do you see it here? Opening curly brace. And inside the opening curly brace, we have another opening curly brace. Then we close the inner curly brace so that we get here one code block. And only then we close the outer curly brace. And I will use a different color here. So we get an outer block so we have blocks inside of blocks inside of blocks inside of blocks if we want that blocks one above below each other or nested inside all these things are definitely possible it's 
a little bit tricky if you do it like that because sometimes, especially as a beginner, you forget the closing curly braces. Let me zoom in a little bit and show you a screenshot from Visual Studio Code here. In this case, you maybe see it immediately, I forgot the curly brace here. Simply it isn't there. But you see where the error appears? The error appears down here, see? And that is kind of strange. So pay close attention when you use these curly braces. Always make sure that you close curly braces that you have opened. Don't forget the closing curly brace. And I would like to show you some assistance that you get from Visual Studio in order to not forget curly braces. Let me switch to Visual Studio for that. Here we have an empty program and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one line of code. Console write line something. Now I'm opening a code block by typing the opening curly brace. Did you see what Visual Studio Code did? Let me zoom in for you. It immediately added the closing curly brace and the cursor is now standing in the middle of these two braces. Why does Visual Studio Code do that? I simply can press enter and now always suddenly immediately I get the opening and the closing curly braces and I can start writing the code right uh, line inside inside of my uh, code block. I can duplicate this line so you see this is now a code block. This is super useful. The other thing that Visual Studio Code does it, it always it, it's that it's always showing you which curly braces belong to each other. So if I click here you see this line here see that? Yeah, exactly. And this line is showing us which curly braces belong to each other. Additionally, it will also here indent all the lines of the code block in a common line here. So you immediately see what your code block is. Even if I do something that is more complicated like a code block, inside another code block, enter, and you see that we nicely get a format and indentations so that it's easy to understand where am I. int i equals 42, console.writeline uh, i, let's put it that way, so you see, if I go here, I see that these curly braces belong to each other. If I go here, I see these curly braces belong to each other. And if I want to add code down below, I can absolutely do that. Console right line. Uh, I am here. You see, it works perfectly. The indentation is super, super important. Believe me, try not to screw that up. Try Visual, let Visual Studio help you. That's important. Otherwise, you will forget about some curly braces. And now I can do the live demo. If I remove this curly brace, I get the arrow down here. But this is not where the problem is. The problem is up here, so the C-sharp compiler does not always know where the curly brace is missing and therefore, especially as a beginner, it's sometimes tricky to find mistakes like that. Back to the slides. Indentation, I showed you that in the live demo, I don't need to repeat that again. And is latest now, you ask yourself why? I mean, why should I put code into blocks, right? For what? what? What does it give me? So let me answer this question. With code blocks, you can define variable variables whose scope is limited. We say the visibility of the variable is limited to a code block. What does that mean? Let me show you an example. I will scroll, zoom in. I will not type in this example because yeah, it, you will see it directly on my slide here, what's going on. In this case, I declare a variable which is called answer, you see it here. But hey, take a look, this answer is inside this code block here. And now comes the important aspect. I can not use the answer outside of the code block. So the scope of the answer, the so-called visibility, is limited to this code block. 
The variable is available from here on until the end of the code block and full stop. That's it. Then the variable is out of scope and this will be a syntax error and the compiler will give you an error. Same is true here. I cannot simply start another code block. Answer is still not valid. And that is somewhat interesting because then you can say I need a helper variable, a local variable, but I only need it in that area. So you can put it in a code block and then it's only available there. We are limiting the scope or limiting the visibility of a variable. You will hear me saying that pretty often from now on. Next step. By limiting the visibility, we can also reuse the same variable name. Sounds difficult? Isn't. Let me show you that. Here we have another example. Again, I will zoom in for you. See, we have a variable called name inside of the upper code block. Then we leave the code block so the variable name goes out of scope. It is no longer available. Then we enter a new code block and guess what? We can reuse the variable name. We can again declare a variable called name because the visibility of the first name is limited to the first code block and the visibility, also called scope, is, uh, is limited to the second code block. This is definitely a different variable. It's not the same variable anymore. It's a different variable because they appear in different code blocks. Nice. The beautiful thing with these code blocks is once you got used to working with these code blocks, we can add conditions to a code block. For instance, we can say, okay, this code block should only be executed if something is the case, if something is true. We call that a condition and that will be the next topic of, uh, that, that we cover in this course. Later on, you will, you will learn that we can take code blocks and repeat them. We can tell the computer, hey, this code block, please execute it 100 times or execute it until something is true or while something is true. There are many different forms of loops and we will definitely learn about them in this course. So these are the loops here. And last but not least, we can assign names to code blocks. Imagine that you write a very, very useful piece of code and you would like to use it in all over your program, three times, five times, ten times, all over your, your program, you would like to refer to this block of code and say, hey, execute this again. I told you before how it works. Something like this, or these uh, uh, things like that are called functions or methods. So they are names for code blocks and we can then refer to these code blocks with the name. We can even pass parameters and we can do crazy stuff with them. You will learn all about them later on. So you see, code blocks are a really useful thing. Want to know more? Want to see conditions, loops and, um, and, and methods? That's the topic of the next video. Thank you for today. Thank you for watching. And the next big topic will be conditions. So take a look at the upcoming video once you are ready. Remember, mastery comes from practice. So keep on coding. See you next time.